Okay. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm here to discuss uh, the meaning of racial groups under uh, international law, which, and I'd like to complement a little perhaps what um, the earlier witness, Max Duplessis, was uh, discussing as well. So perhaps he signalled some of the issues um, that, that, I would, that I would like to raise as well in what is sometimes a bit of a vexed question about to what extent we try to provide some sort of a meaning to the concept of race, which has always been historically uh, a very problematic term. So I, I would like to, I think, perhaps map a fairly clear approach which would be that undertaken under the International Convention on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, ICERD as it's shortened to, from 1965, which Mr. Duplessis already mentioned in his talk earlier. Um, and I think what I would like to emphasize to the jury is the pra pragmatic approach taken under this convention rather than uh, getting into the difficult uh, 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 meanings of race uh, under other approaches. And maybe I'd like to illustrate uh, that a little. Um, I would, the origins of international legislation against racial discrimination go back to the winter of 1959 to 1960 uh, with um, an outbreak uh, of anti-Semitic incidents, which are known as the swastika epidemic. Uh, over a period about, of about a week, uh, in the end of December, beginning of January in 1959 to 1960, you had spontaneous uh, graffiti and desecration of Jewish cemeteries in a number of different states, uh, and there was no evidence of coordination was ever found. So the swastika epidemic has never been fully explained. Um, it happened in states as diverse as Costa Rica, Sweden, and New, Ze and New Zealand, with no, uh, uh, with no evidence of, of anyone being behind it. So the UN at the time was, was alarmed by this uh, evidence of what it called racial discrimination and religious intolerance. Um, Anti-Semitism was considered both as such. It was difficult to distinguish whether it was one form of discrimination or the other. Uh, as a result, they... Uh, in all the states, many European states, many South American states, they asked them to sort of provide reports on these, these, these anti-Semitic uh, outbreaks, which they did, and they duly issued resolutions condemning this, uh, this, this manifestations of racial discrimination and religious intolerance in 1962. Um, subsequently, the uh, uh, Subcommission on the Prevention of Discrimination and the Protection uh, of Minorities, as it was then called, uh, issued resolutions that the UN should put together two conventions, one on the prevention, one on the elimination of religious discrimination and one on the elimination of racial discrimination. Now, the Convention on the Elimination of Religious Discrimination eventually got abandoned and there still is no human rights treaty on religious discrimination. Uh, the Convention on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, on the other hand, met with very rapid success. Uh, by 1963, they put together a declaration on the elimination of racial discrimination, uh, which was very much like the convention, only it had no definition of racial discrimination. Uh, the reason being a definition usually implies legal obligations. So uh, within two years, they had turned this declaration into the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. 1965, um, and it is all forms of racial discrimination is in, is in the title. Uh, it is the first human rights treaty, and uh, Mr. Du Duplessis as well mentioned perhaps the fact that may over 170 states have ratified it. Uh, at the time it was drafted, it was ratified by uh, 106 votes to none. Uh, so it's always enjoyed un unanimous support as such, uh, and it has within it a pragmatic understanding of racial discrimination which uh, I'd like to come to. Um, that's the Convention on Racial Discrimination. An alternative approach is offered by UNESCO, which has been in, been in the news recently. Uh, and in fact, UNESCO provided the first UN action on the question of race. Why was UNESCO interested in race? Well, their, 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 pre their constitution has a very strange preamble, which I've heard described as the last great statement of the Enlightenment, but it includes uh, 
a paragraph which says, the great and terrible war which has now ended was a war made possible by the denial of the democratic principles of the dignity, equality, and mutual respect for men, and by the propagation in their place through ignorance and prejudice of the doctrine of the inequality of men and races. So they took this idea of the inequality of men and races, and UNESCO decided to do, undertake some studies on the idea of race. So beginning in 1950, they issued what is called four statements on the race question. It wasn't originally intended to be four, there was only originally intended to be one statement on race. Um, behind this was an anthropologist called Ashley Montague, who had brought out a book in 1942 called Man's Most Dangerous Myth, The Fallacy of Race, which opened with the line that um, uh, the idea of race represents one of the greatest errors, if not the greatest errors, uh, if not the greatest error of our time. So this 1942 book by the anthropologist had looked at the history of race and said it's the biggest error we've ever made, is classifying in terms of race. Uh, he was behind the UNESCO movement, and his first statement on race said, began with the idea, there's no such thing as race. Let's abandon the concept. Let's use other terms, such as ethnic groups. Um, he was a social anthropologist, and within a year, physical anthropologists disagreed with him, said they brought out their own statement saying, well, maybe there are certain ideas of race that maybe it's not completely uh, unscientific as such. And UNESCO then brought in geneticists, biologists, sociologists, and we had more disagreements. So over a period of about 17 years in which the four statements were drafted, we have a series of conflicting interpretations of the meaning of race according to the different disciplines of the persons involved. Um, so the, when they were drafting, uh, that began 1950, um, ICERD, International Convention on Elimination of Racial Discrimination, learned the lesson as such from the UNESCO uh, statements on race in which no real agreement could be found on its meaning. Um, and therefore, ICERD calls for the elimination of racial discrimination without making any pronouncement on the meaning of race itself. Now, uh, if we look to the preamble uh, of the ICERD of the convention, it, um, it reads that any doctrine of superiority based on racial differentiation is scientifically false. Uh, so any doctrine of superiority based on racial differentiation. Uh, an earlier draft had condemned any doctrine of racial differentiation or superiority. So, uh, the earlier draft had condemned both superiority and the fact of racial differentiation uh, itself. Um, but this was rejected because it was decided that the Convention should not make any comment at all on the idea of racial discrimination, uh, differentiation, sorry. Um, that, uh, that it shouldn't, uh, the Convention should not restate the idea that race as a biological concept doesn't exist, so that it would only condemn the idea of superiority based on racial uh, differentiation. Um, this didn't mean that the Convention supports the idea of race, it just meant that it didn't want to get involved in the debate at all, whether, uh, and that it was better off out of it. Um, so the legal concept of racial discrimination is what we're looking at, and that is set out in Article 1, Paragraph 1 of ICERD, uh, and it defines racial discrimination as any distinction, exclusion, restriction, or preference based on five grounds, which are race, colour, descent, national origin, or ethnic origin. Um, this has been labelled uh, uh, by, by a certain... Um, a committee, the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination monitors the convention as such. So this definition has been labelled a composite concept, uh, with the five grounds serving to distinguish race from the broader concept of uh, racial discrimination. Um, so this, uh, I will quote from Patrick Thornbury, who's uh, a member of the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, uh, which monitors the convention. He writes, the umbrella term for the convention is racial discrimination, not race. Thus, racial discrimination is given a stipulative meaning by the convention as precisely the five terms set out in Article 1, which mentions race, but four other terms as well. It is thus clear uh, that the scope of the convention is broader than notions of race, which in any case may express many usages. So, uh, this idea of an umbrella term, which has so racial discrimination being broader as such than, than race, which in any case has many usages. Um, this sort of expansive interpretive approach to the concept, the committee has since its inception in, in the 60s taken, I think, an expansive approach to the meaning of racial discrimination and has never really seen itself constrained. Um, it, uh, a review, if you looked at uh, the first 45 state reports to the committee, so states which sign the convention are required to submit a report to the committee, and the first 45 of these, uh, over half said there's no racial discrimination at all in our territory. 
Uh, this reflected the concept, uh, perhaps the popular concept of racial discrimination being something which whites, uh, was whites against blacks or whatever the popular perception was. Uh, so many states, not trying to fool the committee or anything, they genuinely believed, they said there's no racial discrimination in our territory at all. And the committee didn't accept this uh, uh, and said, uh, this isn't simply not true, tell us about the different types of groups you have, what forms of discrimination, etc. And from the start, the committee has taken this broad approach that racial discrimination is not something which is confined to an idea of, uh, a, 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 an, an idea of race, a narrow uh, idea of, of, of race. Um, I would give perhaps some, just some examples. I mean, I think beginning with the idea that the convention itself comes from anti-Semitism, so again, uh, its origins um, are, are important. And the committee has consistently included groups which are not considered to be races by, by any stretch of the word. Uh, for example, it has included migrant workers in the Gulf countries on the basis that if you look at a state like the United Arab Emirates in which 85% of the population are migrant workers, so they said, okay, these, this isn't a separate race as such, we're not saying that, but clearly this is a vulnerable group suffering discrimination within, uh, and the convention applies to them. Uh, another interesting example perhaps is provided by caste groups in India, which uh, if uh, some of you may be familiar with the idea of caste-based discrimination in India, but its, its origins are religious, essentially. It comes from uh, Hindu texts. And again, the committee has interpreted the definition within Article 1.1 as including uh, caste uh, groups. Um, that is a rare example of the committee expanding on the meaning of the definition in Article 1.1. It has never <coughs> looked to uh, interpret in any way the meaning of race in Article 1, Paragraph 1, uh, choosing instead to um, just take a practical approach. If it sees that there is discrimination taking place against particular groups, then it's going to want the state in question to be reporting on those groups. Um, okay. Um, to conclude, I think, um, briefly, and I suppose um, lunchtime is coming soon, so um, I, I won't dwell too much. Um, I think in relation to uh, the, the issue under consideration um, by, by uh, the jury, um, I mean, Israel is a member of, of the Con International Convention on Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Um, it, it doesn't extend the convention to uh, the occupied Palestinian territories. Uh, the committee has said in relation to Israel's last, well, Israel has just submitted a report recently, but that hasn't gone before the committee until uh, the next session, but um, from the last concluding observations, the committee reiterates its concern in the position of the state party to the effect that the convention does not apply in the occupied Palestinian territories. Such a position cannot be sustained under the spirit and letter uh, of the convention or under international law, as also affirmed by the ICJ. Sorry, I'm Irish, we speak quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry, um, Stefan. Um, uh, so just from, from 2007, which is the concluding observations uh, of uh, the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination to Israel's State Report, uh, the Committee reiterates its concern in the position of the State Party to the effect that the Convention does not apply in the occupied Palestinian territories and the Golan Heights. Such a position cannot be sustained under the letter and spirit of the Convention or under international law as also confirmed by the ICJ. Um, they recommend that the state party ensures Palestinians full rights under the convention and they mention without discrimination based on citizenship and national origin. So the committee is just saying the convention applies in the occupied Palestinian territories. It's not saying that somehow these are two different racial groups or anything like that. It's saying it takes this broad practical approach in which it looks at vulnerable groups, I would argue, within the different territories, and it doesn't expand or attempt to classify peoples as races, because that is an approach which has proven to be a failure from the start. Okay, I'll leave it there, and I'd welcome any questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. King. Vous comprenez le français? Oui, un peu, oui. Merci bien. <rire> Je vais essayer. Pour élaborer votre porte, vous savez utiliser quelqu'un date, quelqu'un fait concrète qui sert d'appui pour la euh, définition de la situation comme apartheid. Ouais. Euh, ok. Est-ce que mais la définition d'apartheid, c'est le mot utilisé, c'est racial, c'est pas race. Donc pour moi, ça c'est signifiant euh, que euh, ça a une réflexion dans la convention aussi où le mot est racial et c'est pas race. Donc racial, c'est plus grand que race, à mon avis. 
No, ma eh, la, la questione è se si può eh, con E avere mh, utilizzato alcun eh, fet concreto le, le mir, le, la situazione delle scuole, eh, che le, le date concrete che eh, pouvez eh, appuyer la definizione di apartheid? Um, ok, je ne sais pas si je comprends exactement. Concrete facts. Yeah. Tu veux aller dans la ville Palestine Has there been. Um, has there been conclusions on apartheid? Oui, oui, oui. Il y a une, une provision. Uh, euh, spécifiquement sur l'apartheid dans l'article 3 de la Convention sur l'élimination de la discrimination raciale. Et c'était le, le parleur avant, euh, M. Duplessis, il a dit que le comité a interprété la Convention que ce concept d'apartheid est plus grand que l'Afrique du Sud. Et en fait, c'était un membre qui s'appelle Michael Banton, qui était euh, un membre du comité anglais avant, qui a essayé trois fois pour, euh, pour avoir cette réinterprétation d'article 3 pour être plus grand. Et euh, enfin, il a eu du succès en 1995. Euh, et pour moi, la date, c'est signifiant, en fait, c'est le General Comment numéro, euh, numéro 19. Et euh, en, 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 bien sûr, en 1995, l'apartheid en Afrique du Sud était fini. Euh, donc, euh, jusqu'à ils ont peut-être attendu jusqu'à la situation ici était résolue et puis ils ont dit ok article 3 était directé en Afrique du Sud mais on peut l'appliquer dans les autres situations. Rodi. Thank you chair. Um, Mr Keane, as I understand it you say that the convention on racial discrimination doesn't apply to the occupied Palestinian territories. But what about to within Israel itself? Mm. with regard to vulnerable groups mm -hmm. within Israel, mm. be they Palestinians or some of the actual Jewish groups, such as people from Ethiopia yeah. or um, from the uh, former uh, people from Middle Eastern countries. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I don't. I, I, I say that the committee has said quite clearly that it does apply in the Palestinian territories. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, the uh, the committee on the elimination of racial discrimination has said quite clearly that it does apply in the Palestinian territories. Yeah. And that was so. Um, and in relation to groups within Israel, um, if you look at Israel's most recent state report, which is you can you can read it now. Um, Israel itself reports on the fact that the convention clearly applies to vulnerable groups within Israel. It reports on recent cases of attacks against Israeli Arabs, for example, uh, uh, Supreme Court decisions in which people were prosecuted, which is required under Article 4, etc. And like the Ethiopians, etc. That's not an issue that the convention applies. So, yeah. Uh, yes. Mike. On the definition of race, is it possible to include within it, in the broad terms you've done, uh, mm. the concept of common identity? Would that be synonymous with race? And secondly, is there a subjective element in this, in the sense that the group itself mm. perceives it to have a common identity? Um. Yes, I mean, I mean, the committee has been, I think I'll probably just try to address the two as such, but the, the committee has been faced with states uh, denying that groups come under the purview of the convention many times, and it has taken, it has issued a general comment outlining the approach required, which is general comment number eight, which says that uh, the groups can, uh, uh, it shall be based on self-identification if there is no justification to the contrary. In other words, that there is a right of self-identification for groups under the convention and that if the state is to deny that it applies to other groups, then the burden of proof as such will be on the state. Now, I give an example from my own country, which would be uh, travellers in Ireland, where the government has denied that travellers in Ireland constitute an ethnic group. Uh, Sir has said, OK, you can, you can fight this determination if you wish, but they have a right of self-identification under General Comment 8, and then uh, you have to provide justifications to the contrary, which places a burden of proof on the state as such to provide objective justifications to the contrary. So clearly, this self-identification doesn't extend to, to everybody, all groups, that there has to be some sort of limits as such, but that there is this primary right of self-identification as the com committee has interpreted. Maxime, 
Me pare, pre, eh, pie. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Merci. <laughs> So, 